I'm Katie. I'm here at Uni HQ in Austin, Texas, and I'm here with Kelsey, our culinary advisor. Um, and we are going to cook the book today. We're cooking from Odo Lange Test Kitchen's latest uh, cookbook called Extra Good Things. It's all about all of the bits and bobs that you can put on top of food to make it really delicious. Um, and we're going to be making a baked polenta with bechamel and feta on top, and then it'll be topped with some really delicious burst uh, tomatoes that are tossed in a zatar olive oil. Um, you'll have to forgive us. We are currently building the pizza empire out here and there is some construction happening. So if you hear a loud, <laughs> a loud bang, do not be alarmed. We are just uh, shooting outside so that we can cook and there's a little bit of construction noise going on. Um, but I'm gonna let Kelsey get into the cooking and I'll head over here to ask some questions as we go. Hey guys, okay, so Yoda Mengeling, Yoda, sorry. Yoda Modelenghi is an awesome cookbook author from the UK. He's written many books on vegetables, on Israeli food. They're really inspiring for a home cook to learn how to do vegetables in a different way. And this is a fun one too. So what we're doing is a baked polenta, which you take instant polenta with milk and water. You can use vegetable stock, chicken stock, anything to flavor this. It's kind of a blank canvas. You cook it, we laid it out in a cast iron skillet. Um, but first we're gonna have to roast some tomatoes and top it with that. So we have some cherry tomatoes. Um, and we're gonna toss it with a little bit of olive oil, salt. We have some zatar, which is a Middle East spice. Every area in the Middle East has a different version of zatar. Every family has a different recipe. So it's a really exciting uh, flavor to work with. We're going to also top it with a little balsamic vinegar. Um, this is some really nice aged balsamic. Um, you can use any of the one you have at your house. Um, the more flavorful, more aged, the less you need, and it becomes like a really like caramelized, sweet, acidic addition to these tomatoes, which is going to be really nice. And then also we have a mixture of chopped oregano and parsley. And the great thing about a recipe like this is that you can really, a polenta is a blank canvas, you know? Like you cook polenta the day before, you put it on a sheet, baking sheet, and you have some leftover baba ganoush or some leftover tomatoes. And you can just honestly put that on there in the oven. It's going to taste super awesome. All right, so it's nice and oily. It's tossing the vegetables and salt. Seasoning, we'll do a little bit more zatar. It's such an amazing flavor. It's a super bright, almost citrusy spice mix. And right now we have our Karu 16 going around 700 degrees. Um, we've been using the wood fire, which is super fun. And we're just gonna load this into a cast iron. And maybe a little bit more with olive oil. And we're gonna roast these guys for about two to three minutes in this thing. And when you're roasting with wood too, you want to be checking your fire. Like it's 700 degrees, but the flame is a little low, as y'all can see right here. So I'm just going to throw a couple more logs on. And it goes pretty quick. This is a place where I feel like the uni oven is great um, because in the conventional oven, it takes about 40 to 45 minutes to get your tomatoes as burst and delicious as they're going to be in like like Kelsey said you know two to four minutes here so um, they're really great and extra delicious with wood fired yeah it's super fun like when you're cooking vegetables at high heat you're gonna get like an intense char on them you're gonna get like a burst at where as opposed to when you're cooking for a long time you don't get that like juiciness they kind of dry out like these tomatoes are gonna stay super juicy it's the end of the season here which is really fun I got a little cold today, so maybe these are the last ones you'll see. Um, and it's just fun cooking vegetables over wood fire, you know? That's one of the best things about when you're working a wood grill at a restaurant or you're just cooking in the backyard for your friends. It just tastes better. It's more romantic. Um, and this is a very fun way of doing it. All right, they're looking good. Now, for our polenta... Now you can buy instant polenta. Polenta is just basically like corn, uh, 
milled to like a coarse texture, similar to grits. Same thing as grits, just Italian. And you can have it when it first comes out. It's super creamy and but cheesy and milky. But then sometimes, you know, it sits in the fridge overnight and you kind of have like a polenta cake, which is really awesome. And that's when you want to top it uh, with your vegetables and bake it like that. You can eat it like a pancake. You can eat it with a little bit more dairy to make it creamy again. It's very forgiving food. Now I can hear the tomatoes sizzling, which is a great thing. And they're looking good. They're just starting to blister a little bit. So we're going to give it about one more minute. Yeah, and this is pretty fun. I think the awesome thing about these Odalenghi books is that you can learn how to cook really flavorful food. What they do at their test kitchen and at the restaurants in the UK is everything is herbaceous, bright citrusy, which, I mean, they're also really simple. You know, the recipes are one, two, three steps. So you get these incredible flavorful vegetables or lamb dishes or chicken dishes. Um, with a very, you know, like, it's approachable for the home cook. Yeah, they say that this cookbook is all about uh, what they call secret culinary weapons. Um, and those are like dressings, condiments, sauces. So these are all things that if you can learn how to do them. You can put those on top of anything. Zatar tomatoes would be great on top of uh, home baked bread. They'd be great on top of a pizza once you so took it out of the oven. would be amazing for a pizza. Um, so they'll teach you things that you can use not only for like the specific recipe, but All right. like Kelsey said, to make flavorful food. So our tomatoes are done. They've started to blister a little bit. They've got a little char on them, but they're still holding their shape, which you want because these little cherry tomatoes have such juice and burst. You don't want them to be like mushy as opposed to like when you're roasting for like a salsa or any kind of sauce, you want this to like still have a bite to it because it's gonna be the top on polenta and polenta is pretty mushy. So you want some texture on top of that. So now it's time to bake our polenta. Um, so we have our polenta cooked in our cast iron. You can do it on a baking sheet. You can do it on anything that can go in an oven. Um, I've made some bechamel as well, a simple bechamel, a flour, butter, milk, a little black pepper, salt. And we're just gonna spoon this over to add a little bit of cream to it. And you know, bechamel is a cheat code. Anything with bechamel on it is gonna be super delicious and creamy. And we're kinda of just leave the crust edges to it. Like when you're doing polenta in like the wood oven, which you'll see at a lot of Italian restaurants, uh, having that polenta like bubble and get crispy on the edges is really awesome. We're also going to top this with a bunch of feta. You can use any cheese you want, really. I'm also going to throw in on a little bit of the herb mix again. And just a kiss of olive oil. All right. Now this is going to go in the oven for about five minutes. And we're just going to let let it go and like let the polenta get re creamy, let the bechamel cook and combine with the polenta, let the cheese melt, get super gooey, and then we're going to top it with these tomatoes. Hey, uh, Kelsey. Yes. So what's, uh, what's one of the big differences between cooking with wood as opposed to gas? Well, so cooking with wood is a little trickier because you have to maintain it at all times. You know, when you're working with a propane oven or grill, Set it to the temperature you want, and there's not as much tinkering, you know? Your stone maybe gets a little hot, so you turn it down. With this wood fire, as you can see, temperature on adding wood, and that just takes a little bit of practice, you know? Working a wood oven or a wood grill is all about, like, feel and comfortable with your wood. Your wood can be different every time, which is tricky. Um, sometimes it's more dense than others, sometimes it's super light, sometimes it rained on your wood and it's getting a lot of smoke. So it's all about just learning how to do it over and over again. And when you're baking things or grilling things over wood that take an extended period of time, you get an awesome flavor that you don't get with propane. And that's really fun. A lot of people love that, especially here in Texas. Everyone loves barbecue here. And it should be illegal to cook barbecue with propane probably in Texas. So 
it's something that we really just romantic romanticize here. And we're just hanging out, waiting to bake this polenta. I feel like we need to get um, a mic on our tomatoes or something. That was, I don't oh, think you guys could mic. hear that, but that was, it was great. The sizzle was great. Um, this book comes from not just Otolenghi himself, but from Noor Murad, who helps to run, I believe she's the head of their test kitchen. Um, and she's been really instrumental in the cookbooks that they've put out. Um, so I think that she's another one to follow. You can check her out on Instagram. I think her handle is Norish by Nor. I could be, yeah, I'm getting the, <laughs> I'm getting the nod from our Instagram uh, lady. Um, yeah, so she's a great one to check out. She does really beautiful food, and the two of them have become a duo making cookbooks together for the last couple. Yeah, and they're cool cookbooks because you'll see they're cookbooks for the home cook, but, you know, I've worked in restaurants my whole life, and restaurant chefs love his recipes, you know? They really teach you how to cook vegetables in a great way. And, uh... Yeah, they're fun. They're like great Sunday recipes for when you're trying to impress your family or friends. And they're exciting. And everyone needs like little toppers, you know, like some funky tomatoes or any kind of garnish. Sweet. Yeah, we like to use the kinds of dressings and condiments and stuff from this book are things we love having once you take a pizza out of the oven that takes it from like good to great. So we do, we like to come up with garnish of the month recipes. So stuff like fried garlic chips and fun dressings. Kelsey makes a mean homemade ranch. All of that kind of stuff is the sorts of things that they're highlighting in this cookbook. Yeah, we're crisping up, we're looking good. Yeah, so what are you looking for, Kelsey, when you're making this? I know you've made polenta a million times, but imagine you have never made well, it before. What you're looking for, too, and you can see it now. We'll pull it out because it's about halfway through. Is we're looking for some sort of bubbling on it. And at this point, because it's already cooked, we're just looking to reheat it, you know? Let it get kind of soupy. Let the bechamel cook into it a little bit. And... It shouldn't take too long. When you're cooking polenta for the first time, like on the stove, before you get to this point, you want to just make sure that the corn is cooked. Um, if you just heat it up in the liquid and eat it right away, it's going to be a little gritty, a little chewy. Um, you want to make sure it's like creamy, like your perfect grits if you're from America. Dang, this is looking pretty good. It's got a little sizzle to it. Um, it's got the cheese is cooked, the be bechamel is browning, and it's coming into the polenta itself. Um, this is a nice little breakfast dish, honestly. Like This is what I would like to eat for breakfast. Maybe in the Italian countryside, who knows. So I'm just stirring up these tomatoes just so they get re-flavored with all this good oil on the bottom. And we're just gonna kind of like put these bad boys on this. Oh, we're getting visited by butterflies and loud construction noises. So, you know, you yeah. win some, you lose some. <laughs> it's butterfly migration season right now in Texas. So it's incredible. They're all over the place. I had one land on my arm when I had my arm out the window of my car the other day. It felt very magical. And when you're putting these tomatoes on, you want to get as much of that awesome Zatari herbaceous oil as possible on it and it's got beautiful color and again you have some leftover squash or zucchini this is something you can do with that you know this is something you can do with anything that you have in your fridge like I always have a zucchini that's dying to be tossed in zatar like begging to be cooked in the fridge and this is something that you can do in 10 minutes it's super simple and maybe I went a little tomato overload, but that's not a big deal. And then we'll just garnish it with some fresh oregano and some parsley. You know, Wait. if you have like a leftover braise in the fridge, this is awesome for that. Polenta loves braised meat, you know? 
when you guys check out the recipe on uni.com, it'll be for a bit of a larger size of this that'll go on a sheet tray. That works beautifully. We also love it in the cast iron. So this is, what do you think, Kelsey, about half the polenta? Yeah, Maybe this a is probably about more. half. This yeah. will feed a lot, you know, and you can cook a smaller amount of this too. Yeah. Like, when you have instant polenta, it takes a few minutes to cook, you know, three to five minutes. You can cook a cup. This is two cups of polenta. Two cups of polenta goes a long way. So you can feed a lot of people. It could be in your fridge for a couple of days. It's a great, like, midweek dinner. And then you can just eat it for two or three days for lunch. Awesome. Well, this looks great. Um, yeah, should we try it? Should yeah. I eat it? I come and Why try not? it with you. Why not? Time for breakfast. <laughs> That's great. Yum. Creamy. The tomatoes are just bursting with flavor. Mm -hmm. The bechamel and the polenta is super creamy and delicious. It's herbaceous. It's a fun dinner, you know? And it's super easy. We just did this with very little work. So it's a nice thing to cook. And then it's very impressive looking, you know? People will be like, wow, how'd you do this? And it's like, you really didn't do that much, you know? And it goes a long way, so. Yeah, I feel like all Otolenghi dishes are just like colorful and beautiful and they look amazing in the centerpiece of your table if you have a dinner party. Awesome. Yeah, love it. Sweet. Cool. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you guys so um, much. If you're feeling inspired, you can check out this recipe at uni.com. It's again baked polenta with bechamel, feta, and zatar tomatoes. So get cooking. Awesome. Thanks, y'all.